Hi everybody, it's Scott here again. In this video we'll look at detailed drawing and introduce you to the things that you need in a detailed drawing and give you a checklist to make sure that you haven't forgotten anything. For the title slides in this series, I've chosen to use a hand drawing made by my Monash design lecturer and design mentor, Bruce Field. His drawings were some of the best that I've ever seen and some of the best that I might ever see given that this art is slowly dying now that uh, we have computer-aided design and we're able to do most of this work on the computer. It was a real pleasure for me to learn about design from his teaching and hopefully Jenny and myself are doing as good a job of getting you guys interested and excited about engineering design as he did for us. Okay, so to start we're going to show you a detailed drawing. This one is actually taken from the Engineering Drawing Handbook and we're going to walk you through the things that you should look for when you're reading a drawing and also preparing a drawing. The first thing is to think about whether or not your 3D geometry is actually fully defined. So in this one we're going to look at the two different views that we've been provided. We can see that this part that we're manufacturing, a pump shaft, is a circular shape and it has a couple of step downs, different diameters. It's also got uh, this semicircular slot cut out of it that we can also see over here in the section view. We've got the section taken through there and we've got these little drill holes that have been put in the end of it and also some chamfers on the end. So I think that's enough views to fully define the geometry. We've used some special cutaway views here so that we can see inside of it without actually removing it as a full section so that we can still see the detail here. So that is a pretty efficient way of defining all of the geometry. We may have a question here about uh, how do we define the angle of this uh, ball that's been made into the ends of our part. We've just been given a diameter on that. And just to explain, this is a special drill called a center drill. This is what we use to put a little drill hole into the ends of our parts so that we can hold them on a lathe. We're going to more, learn more about that when we get to manufacturing. And then we turn this on the lathe using this chuck here. And then we can run our cutting tools past it or put drills into it to be able to uh, shape the material down. So when we talk about machining, we're talking about lathing and milling processes like this. So we'll give a tick to the 3D geometry being fully defined. The next thing to think about is, is it fully dimensioned? So this takes a little bit more time and effort for you guys to look through the drawing and make sure you've got enough dimensions to fully define the part. If we look around, we see that we have our overall dimension that we always look for, the length of these two step down distances here. We've got the distance here, which shows us the location of this Woodruff key. And we'll talk about that in a second. We've also got the diameter down here, diameter out there, details on our chamfer, and repeated there. One thing you might notice is we don't have a diameter on this uh, diameter here, and we find that we actually get that from the listing of the material. So we have 16 millimeter diameter Marlborough grade shafting. That's a, a particular type of steel shafting, and so that diameter is given to us in the material. We may be a bit curious about uh, the lack of an angle here because we're using this special center drill they're called. They have a particular angle on those tips, which is 60 degrees. And so the person making uh, this part will know that and they'll be able to use this tool and just drill it out until it reaches this diameter. So let's say that the item is fully dimensioned at this stage. The next step is to check, does every dimension have a tolerance? So we have a catch-all general tolerance down here, which says that all the dimensions in millimetres are plus or minus 0.2 of a millimetre unless otherwise stated. And we can see on our drawing that we have several examples where we're actually given a tolerance um, using a different style of format. This is called a limit of size. So this tells us the upper and lower limits of the size. And this is another option that we're allowed to use, but we generally don't use in engineering drawings simply because it makes the drawing look uh, busier than it should because there's lots of numbers all over it and it's easy to read it off a little bit incorrectly. There's also an implied tolerance based on the, the type of steel and the grade of steel that we're using. So this is something down to the manufacturer. And over here, we might notice also that we've got some dimensions in inches. 
uh, or imperial. The reason for that is that this type of key that we've asked uh, for a hole to be cut to take, this is a, a very old style of key and it's been in use for a long time and so people still use them in the imperial version. We haven't upgraded them to metric just yet. So we've got a mix of inches and millimetres on this drawing but unless otherwise stated they are in millimetres as it says down here in our notes. So we do have a, a tolerance on every dimension. Next up we should check that the material is stated and as we see down here yes it is stated what material we should be using to make this component so that's a tick. Is any special manufacturing shown? So as we mentioned before we've got a very particular circular shaped key that goes in this keyway and it allows this shaft to transmit torque to something else that is connected with. This key looks like a $2 coin uh, cut in half that we would drop into this slot and it would leave a little bit hanging out that would work on a keyway in another part and we've told the person manufacturing it that yes they should use a number seven Woodruff key cutter. It comes in different sizes and, and this is the one they should use. This one is about a quarter of an inch. So special manufacturing details have been given. And lastly, is our drawing standard satisfied? And that, apart from all the things we've done, comes down to the fact that we've given the projection system. So we've said third angle projection. We could have also drawn the little picture of the cone uh, in the two views. To show that, we've also given a scale and a drawing number. We've got a title. We've got the, uh, the engineering company here and we would usually put in who it's drawn by, so that's your name, and in this case they've got a person who's checking it and also a person that's approving it and the date. So all of those requirements are satisfied and we're happy that this detailed drawing is done to the standards now.